Well, welcome to our grids arch instructions. This is a soft grids and it comes in a small package. We'll just open this up and take out our framework that we sometimes refer to as a matrix because it is an array, a kind of a grid, and open it up, fold it out, and we have our, our larger pieces to work with. Then we want to take this and take one panel and lift it up and put it on the back and make sure that the edges overlap here. And what we'll do to help that overlap and make it connect together is we're going to take these little tabs and pull them out and do the same on this one and come across and do the same here and here and on the fifth one as well. And we'll do that on the the framework that's below as well as above. Once we've done that we want to get these aligned so that the, the openings for one little dumbbell kind of shape we call it here is exactly matching the one below. Once we get those matched up then we'll want to connect them and we'll show you how to do that next. Well now that we have our two panels laid out so they just overlap on that first row there and have it set so that the the dumbbell openings as we call them are one exactly on top of the other. And we want to show you three different options for how you can connect these panels together. The first one is to use a simple a little short uh, cable tie or zip tie as some people call them. Run it down through the through the hole and then back up. See here there are three straps that sort of one on the left, one on the right, and one overlapping pair down the center. So I want to run it through the hole and then back up through one of those, uh, between two of those straps, and then run it through the, the lock on the cable tie, pull it down nice and tight, and then we'll take a simple, you can do it with scissors, but usually these uh, toe toenail clippers or fingernail clippers can do an even neater job of trimming it off right close and you have a nice neat connection. Another way to do this is to simply use a twist tie. Now these come often on uh, loaves of bread to, to seal the bag. They come other places. You can buy them sometimes in uh, sheets with a whole lot of strips of the twist ties together, uh, pieces of wire between two uh, sheets of paper, or as in this case, uh, plastic on either side of the wire. But we'll do the same kind of thing. We'll run it down through the big large hole, back up between a couple of the, uh, the straps, and just since we have so much length and we want to make it stronger anyway, we'll just wrap it around a couple of extra times and then twist it together. One of the things that you want to be sure to do is just make a nice tight connection but also, when you get this thing twisted together, take these points that are here and turn them back down and press them nice and tightly against each other and fold them down so that there won't be a chance that one of them will pop a balloon. Now there's a third option too I want to suggest to you that may uh, some of you may like as well or maybe even better than these. You can take and put your straps together again. Then we'll simply take a stapler, a large, fairly large heavy duty one run it up and put the staple right there just above the large hole and before the split on the other straps. It's just a small space in there so you need to be careful. But if you are, then when you put that through you have a very inexpensive and strong connection. Just want to make sure that when you staple it that your the ends of your uh, staples do turn under so they won't be sticking out to pop balloons. When we've done this for all five of our connections then our two panels are connected together and we're ready to make one great long arch. Now in our particular case well, I'm going to work with two separate panels because the space I have to work here is fairly small and it may be the case for you on occasion. If you can do it the full length with both panels together and load your balloons that will be easier for you uh, but if you have a small space you may want to do the panels separately and connect them after the fact. Well now we have all five of our dumbbells, we call them, connected across the way there. And in the next phase what we want to do is go look, look at these edges. Down the left side here 
and over on the right side we have a smooth edge that is made up of what we call a carrier tab because it's used to carry the matrix in the process of manufacturing it and in the process of setting it up as we have done here so you can make your arch. But that, now that we have it in place, we don't need that carrier edge or carrier tabs anymore so we want to take them off and we'll show you how to do that. Now the carrier tabs have been pulled off, we can secure one corner of the framework to the table and begin our expansion of the framework so it will be ready for us to load balloons. Okay, now that we have our framework uh, stretched open, the first thing we want to insert into it is a metal tube or a rod. In our case, we're using this half-inch EMT. It's called electrical metallic tubing. It's a standard uh, electrical fixture that is pretty cheap. However, if you can find narrower rods, thinner ones, the, to use for your vertical reinforcement on your arch, then that will be easier for you to use and will be better hidden inside the framework. I slip the tube through the center hole in the, in the framework. And in this case, our tube, uh, we bought a 10-foot length and cut it in half, so we have two 5-foot lengths, one for each side of the, of the arch for support. A little later, we'll show you the base plates that go with that. But first, we want to get the tube in there and stretch the framework open so it's pretty close to its six inch opening. Now that we have the grids ready, we need balloons. What we recommend is that you inflate and size your balloons after they've been squeezed to seven and one quarter inches. Tie them in pairs and then load them as pairs. That way you don't have half as many balloons to pick up. You tie one knot instead of two when you go to seal the balloons and if one balloon comes loose for some reason, it has, it's tied to a neighbor to act as an anchor. All these advantages were part of the intervention and patented by Graham Rouse. They are available for you to use here with the GRIDS frameworks. We have our, our, grid, our GRIDS uh, framework all laid out and we have the aluminum tube run through the center and we want to load balloons. And ordinarily we would just lift up on this and roll the balloons in, but there's so much weight here that it's a good idea to take a simple cluster of floor balloons and put it underneath the frame, the underneath the metal tubing. That way it kind of balances it up in the air and carries some of the weight while we do our loading. Now what I've turned it here so that this tube runs through one of the openings. So this opening, instead of being a full six inches by six inches, is really only six by uh, about five, five and a quarter, something like that. So this, this opening is tighter, and therefore I suggest that you inflate your balloons to only seven inches instead of seven and a quarter. What we'll do is start here on this, this side, since it's a little easier to deal with. Put the balloon down, and then take and turn the knot down 
that you have on there and roll it in. Now if you try to just push, it's kind of hard, but if you just roll it, it's rather easy to get the balloons in there. And you can see how it works on the next one. Now the very first balloon is the hardest, the very first row is the most difficult, but it's not particularly hard once you get the hang of it. So we'll take and roll the next one in and the next one. In. And just take this one and roll it in and then the next one. So you have the pattern going. Now, in order to do the other side easily, I'm being right-handed, I like to load it this way. So I'm going to turn this over like that. Now, I can start again, but this time I want the balloons that are slightly smaller, since this pipe's in the way. So I have a few prepared. Let's get our opening back in there. We want that to be centered and down near the end of the tube. And we'll just roll it in. And the next one. Get a little slippery here. There we go. In this case, what we're going to do is push towards this corner. Push right in that corner when you go to roll the balloons. So we'll roll it from this angle. Next one, we'll do the same thing. We're pushing into that corner there. Roll it in, and then the next one. Now, once we get back out to the next row, we're back to our full size seven and a quarter inch balloons again. And we'll push against the neighbor. Again, push it in towards that corner. Roll this one in, and the next one, and you're getting the idea. After we've gotten some distance, we can just simply take this support balloon. Uh, group and slide it on down and we're off and running again. Now in this case we're loading some from one side and some from the other side as we flip it back and forth and that's not a problem when this is straight. When you get to the arch section where it's going to curve then you want to make sure that you load your balloons from what will become the inside of the arch because that will help keep the balloons from jumping out. Well, once we've loaded all of our four balloons wide by 32 balloons long, it'll look something like this. It is likely, however, that the metal uh, tube, if you use the half-inch EMT that we used, will show up uh, and be visible from the lower five feet and the, what is the upper five feet of this layout here. You can paint it or wrap it in ribbon or tape to help camouflage it. And there's some other tricks and decorative uh, trims that we're going to show you in the next video, so do come back for that. Meanwhile, once you stand it all up, it'll look something like this one. Hope yours turns out well, and you let us know of any questions back at grids.info.